Hi, I'm Bill Needham with Ham Radio Today. My call is K1WN, and my partner in crime here is? Hi, I'm Harold Pugh, K1RV, and uh, also known as Pi by most of the guys on the radio. Okay, here we are. Here's Bob Marchese from Situate, Massachusetts. I wanna, Hi. Wanna, uh, I've known Bob for a few years here, uh, probably maybe better than 35 years, I think. And uh, Bob has uh, got quite quite a station assembled here. He's been able to talk with people all around the world. And and uh, we're going to take a little tour. He'll show us a little bit from outside his house here, some of the antennas. And then we'll go inside and have a look at his station and let Bob uh, explain some things to you. So uh, if you want to take a look, we've taken a look up at uh, the one of the antennas that uh, Bob's got up above the house. And uh, if you want to explain anything about this antenna installation here, Bob. Yeah. It's, uh what we call a three-element tri-bander. It's a rotatable beam. Uh, with this particular antenna, uh, you can work just about any place in the world. It's just as easy to work uh, Boston, Massachusetts, as it is uh, Moscow. And uh, I probably talk, well, with over probably 356 countries uh, worldwide. Maybe when we and, get inside, uh, you can show us a little bit of uh, some of the, uh, the, the cards and material from absolutely. some of these stations. And when we say countries, I mean, you know, I think of England and Germany, those are obviously countries. But that's some a of good the places point. That are countries are little pieces of rock that are out that's, in the middle of the ocean. And that's, yeah, okay. That's an excellent point. Yeah, For example, yeah. the United States in uh, ham radio has three countries Alaska, Hawaii, and the continental U.S. Okay, even There's, though those are states. Even though those are states, they consider separate yeah. countries because they're a certain distance from each other. There's currently 338 uh, ham countries worldwide as compared to 195 political countries. So it's a little harder in ham radio to uh, to work a lot of countries. But so is one of the benefits it. of being a ham that you get to learn a lot about geography and politics? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, worldwide situations. In, in talking years ago when I was in high school, I talked to a lot of people in the Soviet Union. And uh, boy, you certainly get a different story when you talk uh, person to person right. uh, that, than what you read on the news. So yes, you get like first-hand information. A lot of fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. We're going to take a walk over here and check out the uh, antenna installation. Okay. Okay, well now here we are standing a little bit closer to the base of your uh, your tower and the antennas. Maybe you can give us a little explanation of what these antennas are that are up here, Bob. Sure, absolutely. The one we're standing at the base at is a rotatable beam, uh, which means you can obviously rotate it to about any, any position in the entire world. Uh, I would like to add, you do not need to have one of these. In fact, for years when I first got involved in ham radio, I just uh, worked uh, quite a few countries and talked to thousands of people with just a small wire out the window. I see a few wires up here in the tree, so with, with something like that, you still have the ability to talk with people, too, at, at great distances. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, different bands, different frequencies, but you, uh, the point is you do not need an elaborate setup. I've developed this over a period of many years. But to start out, you just need, you could start out with a 20-foot piece of wire out the window and, uh, and you're up and running and talking to the entire world. Most of the antennas that I have right now are specialized antennas for specific frequencies and bands, and it just makes it a little bit easier sometimes to uh, have a better signal. So it's kind of like when you're, when you're golfing, you can do pretty well and enjoy golfing with just a set of golf clubs. But then as you get more into it, you feel the need to maybe get a little bit better, shave a few strokes off, get a little bit, uh, you know, a little more spe specific with your equipment. Absolutely okay. true, but I never good, get good better. But I never get better. <laughs> I don't, I, well, okay. <laughs> Tell me how to do that. Okay, all right. So, anyway, did you take a sweep up and look at the uh, antennas? Okay, good. Okay, good. All right. Maybe we'll take, maybe uh, a little bit further in, we can uh, have you rotate the antenna so that people can see exactly you know, uh, you're pointing the antenna towards Europe, or then you want to point it down towards Australia or something like that? Absolutely. Okay. I'll be more than happy to do right, that. Good. Okay, well, we're having a little different angle here. Uh, out in the backyard, take a look, we're going to take a look up at the tower here, and then when we go inside, uh, have, have you maybe turn the antenna, and we can uh, listen on, on the radio when you're turning the antenna, and maybe you can kind of hear the difference in signal strength as you turn it, and, and uh, even tell us, you know, like which direction you're going to Sure, absolutely. Here now. <laughs> Currently, it's pointing into the west, and uh, this time of the day, uh, it's about 11.30 right now in the morning, Europe should be coming through pretty good. So I'll turn it west through north and a little bit into the northeast, and we'll, hear, we'll listen to hear if we can hear a few European stations. Okay, that's good, because in Europe right now, they're five hours ahead of us that's correct. In, in Greenwich, England. Mm -hmm. And so this time of year, we don't have a lot, of, a lot of time period when we have sunlight that's shared in a lot of, like some areas of the country, of the world, we don't share sunlight. Absolutely. This time of year. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, so I'll go in right okay. now and I'll turn it. Good. 
Okay, bye. Uh, as you can see right now, the beam is uh, just a little bit uh, north of west, and now we'll turn it about 90 degrees to the northeast, which will get us right to Europe, hopefully. And then we'll tune and see if we can hear any, uh, any European stations starting to come in right now. And uh, we're just about right now. We're just stopping the antenna, and we're pointing it directly at, uh, at Europe. And uh, usually, condition on as, conditions aren't as good today as they usually are. Well, in interesting, I'm looking at your map up here too, which we'll focus in on later. Okay. But the comment that I made about sunset, it's looking as though it's already turned into sunset in Europe. That's correct. Absolutely. Except for the far western tip of Portugal. So um, it's, that's very, that's this time of year, at this time of day, this is what we, we might experience. Exactly. Usually yeah. conditions are a lot better than this, but sometimes the solar flares and so forth can really do uh, some damage for a couple of hours to the bands. All right, here we are. We're in your shack. I, I think we we'll have to have a little discussion about the word shack related to ham radio because this obviously doesn't look like a shack. This looks like a great... Uh, a nice, a very nice place that you've assembled here, Bob. Thank you. When we were um, outside, we had you moving the antenna, and, and we, we, could, we rotated it so that you could perhaps rotate it towards England. Uh, maybe we could focus in on the map over here. We could find out why we weren't really hearing any stations in England. If you look at the map, this is a this this is a, an awesome map, and this is a real. You, maybe you can explain a little bit about how this map, what this does. This is uh, this is called the Geotron map. And it's a moving map, moves 24 hours a day, and it shows the positions of the world that has sunlight versus the positions of the world that are in darkness. As you can see right now, our, our local time right now is about 20 minutes to 12, and Europe is just about going into their evening. Uh, we did come in to try to work Europe, but right now on the frequencies we're trying to work it on, we do not have propagation because now they're in the darkness. However, uh, there are other parts of the world which we'll try in a few minutes to see if we can if we can work some other stations. But just to give you an idea, when you're talking to somebody, you can just look up quickly and find out exactly what time, not only what time actually it is in that part of the world, but whether or not they're in the daylight, uh, they're in sunlight, if propagation is going to get better before you start talking, or if it's going to get worse. It gives you quite a bit of information. Again, it's called a geotron clock. Now, these clocks are... are Fantastic! A very, very nice-looking uh, addition to your to your shack here. But I know that there's some software available out there that it's, that's a freeware type of software where you can actually have, if you wanted to, have this on one of your computer screens. And Absolutely. Can, and, and it's actually part of some of the ham radio software programs that we have, so that some people maybe would have this running on a separate screen. Most of it is free. Yeah. You can look it up. A moving map. Uh, you can look under Geotron type clock, and uh, and just Google it, and you'll have the same thing right on your computer. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and what we're seeing here now, though, is that this line, if we focus in on the map for a while, that line is ever so slowly moving, and as by the time we finish here today, what little of Europe, I can see Spain and Portugal are still visible, they'll be in darkness. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, if you were here just a couple of months ago, you wouldn't have seen a bell curve line. That's right. Okay, you would yeah. have seen absolute straight lines where the world was absolutely equal in sunlight and in darkness. And of course, as the Earth tilts a little bit further away from the sun, Europe, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Australia is now becoming, going into their summer as we go into our winter. And as you can see, there's certain parts of the world that will get just about continuous sunlight and certain parts that will stay in the darkness for well, a few months. Well, now I can see when you're talking about the continual darkness and the, you know, <laughs> the, uh, up in the northern, you know, up towards the North Pole and Alaska, so if Alaska is now in total darkness, does that mean that you can't see Russia from there anymore? <laughs> no, you can always see Russia from Alaska okay. if you live in the okay. right areas. Okay, all right, very good. <laughs> so uh, maybe we can, uh, we were listening to a station on, on here that was, we thought was in England, and as it turns out, he was a station from England who's now operating down in Jamaica. So I don't know if he's still on this frequency here now, but maybe we could turn the antenna down towards Jamaica. And sure, we can do we that. Can hear him. We have the antenna currently right now in the northwest. I'm going to turn the antenna down towards Jamaica and see if he gets a little louder. 